um, when we first arrived, we went out to dinner with some of the executives and the reporters, and um, there was a casual, off-the-cuff conversation about the Helix and the engineering of it. And when they were talking about it, they were like, the, a lot of the executives were like, uh, we don't really, you know, like this this concept, but you know, we'll we'll defer to the engineers and you guys build it and let's see what happens. And they were really excited about how it was received by the market, and that people that had it and used it were really, really happy about it and excited about it. Uh, one of the main features about it is that it's a detachable um, monitor, let's say. So it becomes a total just tablet without the keyboard, and it has its own battery and everything inside the, uh, the top part. And then the bottom part, you can consider an extra battery. Um, and you can also turn it around and use it in presentation mode also. So it's got lots of different ways um, of using it. And the woman that was using it that I interviewed uh, was just, she went on and on and on. It's a great little YouTube thing. I guess you're going to be getting that out for people to be able to take a look at it. Um, That's right. And you know, she she was using the real world, and she was really, really excited and happy about it. Uh, and so that's the helix, and it's it's got a lot of buzz. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jay, I was just elevating Catherine, um, David. Catherine, David, you'll now find that you're a panelist. Welcome aboard, Catherine. Are you there? Let's see, Catherine. Let me make sure that I have an aha. Yeah, Catherine, if you could double check your sound, but welcome aboard nonetheless. I know she's out there. Um, Jay, what I was going to say, if, if you didn't, come, forgive me if you've already covered this, but the thing about the Helix, um, I, I, I mean, it is, it, 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 it's kind of the state-of-the-art model, and it's a little bit smaller, like the, wait for it, wait for it, the dreaded netbook, but, but don't be fooled. I'm only talking about a form factor. The netbook, you know, had a mixed reputation. I owned one of them back in the day. That's not what we're talking about, folks. We're not talking about performance and all that. What I'm talking about is for the road warrior on airplanes, that the, you, you take your seat on an airplane. So, so visualize this with me, folks. Just stand up, close your eyes, and visualize. And what you do, um, you take your seat on an airplane and you put down the tray, well, the tray has that little lever, that lever, right, that you have to move to the right up at the top of the tray so you can have a tray to use your laptop. Well, what the Helix does and what my netbook did was it's just below the danger line of this little lever because what can occur with a full-size laptop is when you pivot the screen at a certain degree, it gets trapped underneath that particular point. And, and trust me, I live in Seattle, and I've talked to my son who wants to be an aeronautical engineer, so hopefully when he finishes and goes to Boeing, he will redesign the airline seat. But Jay, have you ever seen this? Or maybe you've gotten caught yourself on a full-size laptop when the person in front of you unexpectedly leans back. You can crack your screen because of that little lever. Does that, Jay? Am I making any sense at all? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I think today you're making sense. Yeah, it's an 11.6 inch screen, and it's that sweet spot. You know, you can you can work, you can be productive on 11.6 inch screen. I know when you were doing the netbook, wasn't that like a 10 inch screen? Right, right, right. But the point is, a 14 inch screen, which I'm on right now, a Lenovo. Um, the point is, Jay, is if that uh, person in front of you unexpectedly, and I will offer abruptly, leans back before you can respond, your screen will get caught underneath that lever, lever, I'm using both variations because we do have an international audience today, and your screen will crack. And that's what I like about the Helix is that small form factor. And then, of course, the obvious, that you only need to have one device. You, you can take the uh, tablet component out and read your book on the plane when you tire from working. How about them apples, Shay? Uh, yeah, I think those apples are good apples. Good apples. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Harry. 
it's Catherine there. David. I just wanted to um, add a few things about the Helix um, now that I was able sure. to dial in. Um, one thing that's really good about it is that it gives the ability for users to use it if it's something that they're using it for personal as well as even in a professional environment because it gives them the tablet mode, but then if they need to be at their desk and attach to an external monitor, they can do so and then get that clamshell piece of a working laptop as well. So it really is um, the best of both worlds for the end user. It yep. truly is, Well, Welcome aboard, Catherine. I, I apologize for the goblins and gremlins that kind of afflicted your initial dial into the webinar. And also, no worries. Uh, I, and I want to warn you, Jay Weiss has got some gremlins and goblins and sounds he's going to do. It is Halloween, folks, so we'll have a little bit of time. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. No problem. Well, let's move ahead and let's talk about the tablet too. So Jay, take a stab at it, and then Catherine, I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, let's see. The tablet too, that's a 10.1 inch uh, screen, and um, it's got the Atom Intel processor in it. 1.8 gigahertz is, uh, looks like the standard uh, processor for that tablet. And, um, yep. you know, anything from Lenovo is well made and, and you know, a good device that you don't have to worry about its stability long term. Yep. Catherine, what are some of what what are some of your observations with the tablet too? And then I'll give you my initial take on it. Well, the tablet too is very interesting. It's one of the more unique tablets that out on the that's out on the market because it directly competes with the very well known um, Apple iPad. The thing that makes it so different is it is a business class tablet. So it gives you the ability to not only consume content but also to create content and create it on a level that's um, going to be that's going to be at a professional level. So it allows you the ability to get corporate level security. So it can be something that's deployed to these enterprise level customers, but also in an SAP environment where security is very important, it allows you to use that and it gives you up to 10 hours of battery life. And if durability is something that might be of concern to you, we do have an accessory that is a, um, that is a kit for, that's basically um, a case that is a survival case that makes it a mil spec unit. So it passes eight mil specs and makes it a military grade machine. Wow, now that I did not know. That is yeah. cool. Um, well, let me tell you my experience with the tablet uh, too, and then uh, I'm going to double check the chat feature and see if we have any questions. Um, looks like we're clear on chat. Folks, use the chat feature to ask your questions today. So, so Catherine and Jay, you know, I, I live in the real world. You saw the earlier photo of my Springer Spaniel, his nose poking over the sofa. Well, on the other side of the sofa, you will typically find my 15-year-old son, Harry Jr., up in the man cave, and we're watching football and so on. Well, needless to say, uh, when I got the combat kit in preparation for this worldwide tour, um, I said, uh, boys, come on up. I have two sons. Boys, come on up. Let's lay it out. Let's charge them. Let's, let's test them and see what, what it's like in the real world. Okay. And what I found uh, with my 15-year-old, um, my 17-year-old is a little bit harder to find and track down because he's of that age. But the 15-year-old has really gotten his head into this. We'll have an article in next week's newsletter um, about his experience. But he gravitated towards the tablet, too. And you know, the, 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 the touch functionality, all these devices have the touch functionality, which quite frankly was a little bit newer to the browser family uh, under the Windows 8.1 scenario. And he gravitated towards it, and there's nothing like a kid to do the speeds and feeds on a device. I mean, he, he's playing a game on it and all this. Stuff. Yeah, he, does that make sense, you guys? I mean, that's, that's, that's what I call Absolutely. real test. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And one thing that you also want to keep in mind with that with the ThinkPad tablet too is it's got USB ports on it. So it's got, um, you know, it has the ability to have a media card as well as USB ports. So, and there's also a, um, a case that we just came out with that makes it a mobile point of sale unit as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, a couple of questions rolling in that I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll take them head on. Um, so uh, please email the link to download the uh, reference 32-page doc. I got the same question from Peter Cole and then Dave Runda. Dave and Peter, it's very simple. Just go to smbnation.com, go to one of the first menus on the left, content, and select magazine, 
and it's issue 8-1. Issue 8-1 of the magazine, just released at the fall conference, is the Windows XP Migration Kit. And again, you'll see a lengthy interview with Chris Fry um, regarding what was initially called the Mobility Kit. I want to be honest, when I wrote this article back in the June-July time frame in an interview, um, and maybe Catherine can speak towards that, I, I, I wrote it up as the Mobility Kit. It's now called the Combat Kit. Can, can you speak towards the rebranding at all, or maybe when that occurred? Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a uh, formal rebranding on it. What it was was internally, so in case of all of you, um, just to share a little bit of information, um, my name is Catherine David, and I um, manage our inside um, sales team for the channel, and I have a history of being an inside seller or a field and inside seller for our channel team. And our internal training that we have here um, has a lot of the, um, the I guess, military-esque um, naming to it. So some of our internal training is called Combat Plus, hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Um, so we created this, what we call our combat kit, which allows our business partners to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat regarding um, touch within the market. Okay, okay, cool. And boy, all, the, all this language you're using, Catherine, maybe Jay Weiss wasn't too far off from the mark at the beginning of the webinar where he described Chris Fry as aggressive. So. Oh, absolutely. I, I work very closely with Chris, and I'm, in our, I, I'm located in our corporate headquarters in um, North Carolina, and I work with him very closely. And yes, it is very, we are very high energy, very intense, and, um, you know, we're looking to you know, grow and remain number one in the industry. Absolutely. Well, let's move on. And folks, let me get back to my, my screen. There we go. Well, what do you know? It's Catherine's slide. Catherine, uh, I'll let you, you lead. <laughs> Welcome. Well, thank you so much, Harry. I appreciate um, you allowing me to join today and giving me some time within this webinar. So um, this kind of goes in a little bit more in the naming, kind of uh, the question that Harry had, you know, leads us into this slide. So let's talk about hand-to-hand -hand combat, what it means and why it matters. This gives you some details on our combat kit. As Harry had mentioned, uh, you know, Harry and Jay went through the product line that is in the combat kit. And the reason why we have this is because, you know, touch is a conversation that is taking place right now and it's very relevant right now because of this XP migration and the end of, um, you know, end of, end of um, lifing of XP. So it's very relevant right now because there's a transition taking place in the market. And many of the SMB customers, and even at the enterprise level, I would say it goes into saying that purchase cycles are about anywhere between three and four years. So if you figure you, you're you talking to one of your customers, say a 10-person, ten, 10-lawyer ten law firm, they have an opportunity um, to, it, this is their time that they're going to be refreshing their systems. So you, you go ahead and you can give them a like-for-like like of what they traditionally purchase, but in the next three years, if you think about it, they, the industry reports now, I believe IDC had stated that within the next two years, 75% of all users are going to be adopting touch. So with that, in order to protect their investments, why not offer some sort of touch product in order to protect their investment so that they in turn have happy users and the IT person at that organization is someone that is looked at as a hero, which is something that's good. So what we're doing, we created this combat kit because we understand that touch is new to the market and this window, Windows 8 and 8.1 is, is it's new to the market. So we want our business partners to be winning on the street, winning customers over and increasing their customer satisfaction. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we created these so that you could purchase these on your own um, through DNH or tech data and you could use these for yourselves and bring them out to your customers if you wanted. And we're going to train you on how to present these kits and what the, what the purpose of them is and help, help all of you to pass along the information to help the end users develop their skills and their understanding of touch and the new product into the PC Plus arena, um, what is offered. So it gives you the ability to say, okay, do you want to look at this X1 Carbon Touch with Jay spoke about? This is for the people who, you know, they're typically they go along, you know, they like the, the, the traditional clamshell type of a unit. So for those people, 
you can offer them, hey, this is the X1 Carbon Touch, this is a traditional clamshell unit, but this is how you can use Touch and Windows 8 and 8.1 within this. Then you can go into the ThinkPad Twist, which is another unit that provides you the ability to twist, bend, fold, and spin, but it gives you the touch capability, and it's, it's, it's both. It's the best of both worlds. ThinkPad Helix is for those adopters that are a little bit more. So it kind of, you can, you know, we all know that within a 10, you know, 10 person law firm, people are going to have many different wants and likes and also be in a different stage of how they adopt technology. This kit allows business partners to present all the different stages of people's adoption of this technology and speak to it and then give their customers the choice. So it's more like rather than we keep hearing be, bring your own device, it's now choose your own device. So choose a device that best, fit, best fits your users' adoption rates and their needs and likes and wants. So that's the reason why we did this um, as an education piece because we understand that touch and Windows 8 and 8.1, cha it's changing the market. It's changing the marketplace that we typically sell into. Yeah, Catherine, let me tell you, we did the um, an XP migration uh, presentation for the city of Temple, uh, the Chamber of Commerce in Temple City. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and down in having, LA last week. Yeah, that's right. We launched in LA. Go, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, and having the Lenovo kit um, was really great because we were able to take out each one of the devices, send it around the table, let everybody look at it. It really changed the dynamics of the presentation where mm -hmm. people could actually see a variety of choices that they could choose based on their personalities and their personal preferences and ask questions. And um, it was very engaging and it, it was, it was uh, eye-opening the way Good. people and, responded to it. Yep. And that's great yep. feedback. And basically the reason why we did this is because we wanted our business partners to have the ability that the market is changing. The way that people are buying is changing. So we want to adapt to that as well and be flexible with that. And we also know that um, it's expensive a lot of times for business partners to you know, to purchase these products to show customers. So, you know, we, we want to help our business partner community um, and help it and enable them to grow their own businesses. So why not offer, let's present a kit that allows them the ability to offer, you know, all the different types of technology so that people can, you know, purchase what best fits their needs. Because I, I can tell you that moving into the next few years, I don't think we're going to see what we have in the past where people just standardize on one model and that's what they stick to. I think we're going to see standardization on multiple types of models depending on where they are in their adoption of touch. Yeah, yeah and, and I'll add a little context if you don't mind. So Jay, you're right that it, it, it was a game changer in our launch event down in LA last week and Jay was there to assist and uh, do little magic tricks and make noises like he is today on Halloween. <laughs> and we, 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 we did this at there. I knew that would bring out your little your, your little handheld <laughs> noise maker. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting here. <laughs> I know that was the softball. Well, it's Halloween, Jay. Um, but but what we heard, Catherine, from the people at the event was uh, it, it 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 they they could literally touch and feel the devices we were talking about, and it changed the event from being um, the title was about April 8th and the deadline for the support for Windows XP migration. And it changed the event to a much larger conversation about the disruption in IT caused by these end of support dates. And it, it puts everything in play. All of a sudden, we, not, not only did we spend far more time on the combat kit than we intended, and, and, and I mean that in a nice way, but mm -hmm. um, the, the conversation shifted up to telephony. Okay, once, once you introduce disruption, right, like, you know, tablets and mm -hmm. laptops and you make the change, everything's in play and I want the partners today to, that's a, that's a major takeaway, you guys, is what, what we call the attach, okay? So, so going in and selling a singular laptop, great. With, with Windows 8 Pro, great. And Office 13 Pro, great. Um, it's a much, much bigger conversation. We're going to use the next few months with our webinars to kind of slowly peel back the onion on that. And then what I would tell you, um, Catherine, if, if I, I think you were online when we started the webinar, but I'm deep hidden inside building 122 Microsoft OEM right now doing this webinar until security finds me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but 
you are the only OEM, and I, I, I mean this sincerely, that I am aware of that has this kind of kit. So folks, this is an air freight Clydesdale box that's mm -hmm. Lenovo red. And then you open it up, and it turns into its own little kiosk or presentation mode. So as, as you can see, the, 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 the lettering is very attractive, and then the wrap around the devices. Well, what this means is, is you can do your own lunch and learns for customers. You can do you know breakfast meetings. You can take this to the law firm and pop it open in their boardroom. And let's just say this is boardroom quality. I mean, this, this presents itself very nicely, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate the feedback. And if any of the business partners on the line today are interested in purchasing one of the combat kits for themselves, they do have the ability to go through DNH. I know that DNH has about 44 left to sell. Um, and right now, I believe their cost on that is um, somewhere in the $4,000 range. And just to put that into perspective, I know that that, that dollar amount may seem like a a heavy number to swallow at first, but if, let me just put it into perspective. If you were to purchase each of those units individually, they'd be well over $6,000. So that is something okay. to keep in mind. There is an, a savings, built-in savings automatically on those units, but then you also get the, um, the content in order to present each of those kits, those wraparounds as you see in those pictures that gives the, the details on each of the on each of the units, and you have the ability to power them all on, the accessories are there so that you have that um, and you can present that to, to your customers. But then you also, we have, we understand that you know, the technology is changing. We also have a buyback program in place um, that's coming in in January to buy those units back as well as what we'll do is we'll buy them back from you and then we will refresh them with the latest and greatest technology as it comes out. Well, and, and, and let me comment on that. Catherine, what I've done is I've hopped two screens ahead. Uh, Stephen uh, Lai out of San Francisco is asking, what's the URL to get this? So forgive me, Catherine, I, I, awesome. I, I popped to the call to action screen. Folks, um, you're going to get this information in my thank you email tomorrow as well, but it's now on the screen in front of you to start this journey to get the combat kit. And Catherine, I just want to do a little bit of fact checking. Are there, are there other ways people can use the combat kit? say, a loaner program or anything like that? I, 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 yeah. I've had that question. Okay, what, what are other ways to enjoy the combat kit? So there is the different distributors. Some of them have a loaner program in place um, so they can see that. Or they can reach out to their Lenovo um, field rep. Or if they have an inside rep, they can reach out to them to, say if, to see if they have a kit. I know that there's, for my inside sellers, there's quite a long list of people that are waiting to get a hold of it. So at this point in time, we've been urging those individuals to um, to go ahead and reach out to distribution and see about purchasing it on their own. So if they don't want to purchase it, there are other alternatives, but there's a lengthy list of people that are waiting to get their hands on it. So that's why we're urging people to go ahead and make the purchase um, so that they have it, so that they can get it quicker. I just well, want to add one other thing there, yeah. Harry. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, go when ahead. you go to the um, that link, the dnh.com uh, forward slash uh, XP migrations. If yes, you sir. scroll down in the middle of the page, it says how to take advantage of the special offer. And it looks like the way you have to do it is you actually have to email uh, the do. Lenovo specialist at DNH. Just so, you know, because I, I was looking for a link to actually say, okay, I'm ready to do this. Where do I click? And I see that that's not there, but what you have to do is just you know, create a dialogue, start a communication with um, the Lenovo specialist at DNH. That, that, that's absolutely Good point, Jay. true. And, no, thank you, Jay. That's absolutely true. Uh, DNH has been great to work with in designing both, you know, how to get the combat kit, but but ultimately how to order Lenovo SKUs um, mm -hmm. as part of your, uh, your 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 migration motion with the customer. Um, what, what I was going to add on the, uh, the, the, the call to action and the, 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 the look and feel and so on, um, it may be I'm just reiterating, but well, for two, two, two things. One is, Catherine, it doesn't surprise me for a loaner program you would have a waiting list. Mm -hmm. that's, very much, that's very much like the Bainbridge Island Library when a uh, popular book comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so if anything, it shows the popularity of the uh, – the, the, the offering that you have. And again, I'm not aware of any other OEM doing exactly this. Um, 
And, and then the other thing was, I just want to do a shout out. Make sure I understood about the refresh because here, here's what I heard. You, you, you can do a refresh with DNH on the uh, uh, with with Lenovo on the actual components itself, and it strikes me that that's brilliant because if you're in technology, there are uh, product life cycles, and so there's kind of a built-in um, depreciation duration, a built-in obsolescence, and 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 it, it's just the way it is. That Lenovo is mm -hmm. in the business of R and D and innovating, coming out with new and improved parts all the time. So if you maybe just want to hit on that point one more time that people can refresh the contents of their kit, because that sounds like investment preservation to me. Absolutely. So what we're doing is we knew that you know this is something that was going to be a huge hit because, as you had mentioned, Harry, that we're the only OEM that has this out in the market. So what we did is we built an investment protection for all of you by creating a buyback program. So what Lenovo will do is we will, for those who have purchased it, we will buy back the hardware when it comes time to transition. For instance, um, the ThinkPad Twist that is in the combat kit right now is going to be um, refreshed with our ThinkPad Yoga, which we're going to be launching in January. So when that happens, yep. we're going to be buying back the Twist from those business partners that want to refresh their refresh their unit, and what we'll do is we'll buy that back from them, and then we'll give them a ThinkPad Yoga in its place. Excellent. So it'll be it'll Excellent. be the latest and greatest technology. So we want to make sure we didn't want it to be a one and done situation. We want this to be an active selling kit for all of our business partners, so that they have the ability. We understand that you know you're our feet on the street. You all are the people who are selling our products. So we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and making sure that you have the latest and greatest product lines that we're offering. Yeah, I got, I got, I got to tell you, Harry, yeah, that's ahead, a game. That's a game changer. I have a, I, I have a storage facility that's loaded with tons of uh, equipment that I've gotten uh, over the years that you know is just obsolete and it just kills me because you know it's like, what do you do with this stuff? And and then it, then it makes you actually draw back of you know getting stuff to do demos with because you blink your eyes and it's obsolete so Absolutely. I think that's a game changer I'm so glad uh, Catherine that you guys have thought that through and have done that oh that's great feedback we appreciate it well and let me Catherine close your ears for a minute uh, but every small business owner entrepreneur on this call will understand what I'm about to say that uh, that Nikon camera I own for the magazine wink wink um, it has a way of finding itself for pleasure photography on occasional weekends, and that used to be projectors turned into home theaters on the weekends. And so what I'm getting at, and I know Catherine's not listening to me, <laughs> what I'm getting at, folks, is if you have teenage kids, how cool is this, that you'll get the latest toys to play with? And, and as you should, I mean, you should eat your own dog food, you should get to know the products, and let those teenagers take a run at this. Um, and you'll really, you'll really learn <laughs> the speeds and feeds. Let me tell you, Catherine, you can, you, you can return now. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Actually, I got, I got one more thing to add. I, I would not call the combat kit dog food. I would call it French cuisine. Okay. Um, we have a lot of questions. So Jay, what I'm going to do? Oops, Jay, I skipped a slide. We have a bonus conversation that's not part of the kit. Then we're going to get to your questions, folks. Really excited that I, I, I've got several queued up. We are going to end promptly at 11 uh, Pacific in about 15 to, uh, minutes or so. So, so Jay, quickly tell us what we're looking at and why is this so cool. And again, I want to reiterate, this is not part of the kit, but it's part of the Lenovo family. Go, Jay. Yeah, and, and I and the reason why I brought this to the XP migration events was uh, I believe that desktop replacements are also um, an option that you need to expose your clients to. And this is the latest and greatest from Lenovo. It's called a Tiny. Uh, and it's really small, and um, it's about the size of four golf balls side by side. Um, and so it's a great unit. So I bought this before the XP migration, put it together, brought it to the uh, XP migration event that we did for the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and everybody was more engaged with it than we expected they would be. So, yeah, and then Catherine. we went to the evening event uh, with the other ITs that we were talking to about XP migration, and um, 
they were also, you know, it was one of the units that people were like, wow, look at that. Oh, that's great. And, and it's a powerful unit. Yeah, and Absolutely. Catherine, I, I, I'm gonna yeah, Catherine, I'm gonna pose a question to you. I, I, again, we launched in LA last <coughs> week. This was part of the feedback we got. It was fantastic, and and we were surprised at the robust nature of the conversation concerning a desktop unit. Does mm -hmm. that surprise you? And what are you seeing at Lenovo? Is the desktop still alive? Absolutely. So especially moving into this new tablet and tablet and ultrabook arena and adoption that we're seeing and now that touch is moving and becoming a greater importance into the industry we're seeing actually an increase in desktop sales the reason why we're seeing this is because we're seeing the traditional you know some of the traditional clamshell units we've we've actually seen somewhat of a decline in those sales because of the adoption of ultrabooks and tablets so people are using their phone as, as a unit, they're using their Ultrabook or their tablet as a unit, and as their secondary machine, they're using a desktop, which is a major difference from what the industry has seen traditionally over the course of the past five years. Perfect, perfect. Well, Catherine, with that said, let's let's jump into uh, what what's a fair amount of questions. I just I left off at my friend Stephen uh, Lie out of San Francisco, an MVP, about the URL. Stephen, the URL is on the screen. I have a silly comment from Sonny. Um, Sonny, I'll answer you offline. He's talking about Android uh, on a tablet versus Windows 8. Uh, wrong webinar, Sonny. Wrong webinar. I'm in. <laughs> I'm inside Microsoft OEM, brother. <laughs> um, Catherine, your audio uh, might have been a little bit intermittent. Jay, I think Catherine has come through clean for me. Jay, is Catherine been clear for you? I believe so. Loud and clear. Okay, great. We have Sunny. Okay, Sunny, I'll take this question. Can we get a content spec sheet on the units inside? Absolutely. Catherine has gotten me some information that we'll mail out tomorrow. And Catherine, if there's any more public-facing information or links you would like me to email out with a thank you notice tomorrow, I typically email that out first thing Friday morning. If you want to get me anything else you think the audience might like, like spec sheets and so on, please do. And I'll make, that part of my, I'll make that part of my morning email. Uh, thank you, Sunny. Um, we have oh another one from Sunny uh, uh, article a while back in Redmond Magazine. That might delay pulling the plug on XP. Uh, Sunny, I can honestly say, and I'm not breaking my NDA with Microsoft or what have you. I welcome Catherine to speak towards this, but I have no evidence. I have had not a single conversation. I have no reason to believe that they will extend the April 8th deadline. Um, this is. This, this is firm and fast, and, and, and quite frankly, there's 10 reasons why it has to be. Catherine, I don't know if you can comment on that, but I, I have heard no conversation about it. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I haven't heard anything, anything of that, of them delaying it at all. Oh. Yeah, Harry, I would just like to add one other thing on that, and that is you are um, doing the XP migration tour with uh, events for IT partners and whatever the latest information is on any of that stuff we'll be passing that along at those events. Yeah and I, you know folks I pride myself on being fairly well connected out here in Redmond and and you know I'm, I'm not holding back I'm just not hearing it. So we have a question from Terry Hansen. Terry asked are the devices shipping with Windows 8 or 8.1? Uh, well I can answer it from my point of view the devices I have or Windows 8, um, then, but but you, you can go to the store and upgrade them to 8.1. Catherine, maybe you can talk about that. But I got I got my kit a little while ago. I mean, I'm I understand yeah. why mine's eight. <laughs> yeah. So so they they're currently shipping with eight. But what we do is we have the we have the unit we have the BIOS update so that everybody can and the downloads to upgrade it to 8.1. Okay. Okay, great. And then when and, and we also have it. We have the instructions in the kit. So if the business partners wanted to wanted to provide it to one of their end users to see if one of those, like say for instance, the tablet two would work within their environment um, and on their applications, they can install their own BIOS and everything and all the directions is is within the kit. Perfect, and that's absolutely true. That not only are there directions within the kit, there's a sleeve for instructions. But when you um, boot up the devices, there are some tiles that relate to some XP migration messaging and other messaging. So 
Again, a lot of thought went into this. Um, and along those lines, Joshua Lieberman out of New Mexico, uh, good, good morning, Joshua. He's asking, hello there, what machines exactly are in the kit, please? So, Catherine, maybe if you want to run down the lineup again, and uh, Joshua will also give you the slide deck that has the photos of each. Go ahead, Catherine. Absolutely. So within the kit, we have our Tablet 2, our ThinkPad Tablet 2, which is a traditional um, a traditional tablet. We have our ThinkPad Twist, which is a unit that bends, folds, spins um, in all types of different directions that gives you the, the ideal of a clamshell but the ability to put it into tablet mode. We have our ThinkPad Helix, which is a tablet. It's a laptop and a tablet and everything in between. So it's got the tablet but it plugs into a um, keyboard that makes it a clamshell working device, as well as our ThinkPad X1 Carbon Touch, which is a 14-inch Ultrabook that is a traditional clamshell. Thank you. Uh, I have a question from Paul Coop. Paul asked, Paul, and you might have to re-ask this. I, I'm not sure I understand the question, so, so hit me back. But it says, what is the percentage buyback and purchase? I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying. Um, Paul, if you could clarify, because the next question from Jeff Goodling, Jeff Goodling asked, when you say buyback, is that one for one, a, a one for one exchange at no incremental cost? Catherine, I do understand that question. One for one exchange at no incremental cost with your buyback. The details on that, I know that we're still working through it um, because we haven't had to refresh anything as of yet. Um, I think the refresh isn't going to come until January, so those details are coming. But I know that we will make it so that it is a minimal cost impact, if at all, to the business partners. Okay. Okay, the, the, the last question I have, and folks, I'm going to go ahead and issue the first call for the last questions, and I'll tell you why. Jay, get the laughter noise ready for this one. I left Bainbridge Island so fast this morning that I grabbed the wrong power cord, and I'm here at Microsoft Redmond with about 15% battery left. And that's not Lenovo's fault. That's me on the ferry. That's my commute. And I literally do have to kind of start thinking of a hard stop at 11 a.m. because I'm the presenter. The battery's going to die. My bad. I guess I'll be going home early for trick-or-treating. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, but Joshua, and, and I, I, think, I, think, I think everybody on the call has done that where you forget the power cord. Um, Joshua is asking for models, model numbers, guys. We're resellers and tech guys. So, Joshua, yeah, my personal commitment in the follow-up email with this deck, I will add the, uh, the, the, the model numbers um, in addition to the English spelling. Jay, if you can help me on that, let's, let's get the D and H SKU numbers. Yeah, and yeah. If, any, if any of you have any questions, you can always go to the Solutions Center website, which has all of our Lenovo part, num part numbers on it, and you can provide that to oh. D&H. Yep, it's LenovoSC.com. Okay. In case if anybody needs it right now, LenovoSC.com. And then they could, pull, they could filter according to the machine type, but I'll also add the MTM machine type in the information I provide to you today, Harry. Yeah, yeah, Harry, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, aren't you guys creating special queues with special discounts also? Um, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. That's, that, that's in progress right now. And, and folks, by vir virtue of joining today's webinar, um, you're going to be part of the conversation with XP Migration. So hang on fast because we will use emails and, and additional webinars to continue to educate you and update you on what the opportunities are. For, for example, I, I have a really good question now. In fact, I was working with Catherine just earlier today on the events that we have going on, and uh, David Grinder is asking for a little bit more details at xpmigrations.com uh, forward slash events about the delineation between the customer and the partner of it. David, I'll give you the short answer. And, and, and then I'll make it part of the email as well. But the short answer is we're uh, literally updating the remainder of the events um, as we speak for the balance of the year. And that website will be refreshed over the weekend as well as our registration engine. So um, appreciate your feedback. It's entirely fair. And, and we are going to provide some additional details, making a distinction between customer and partner events and what the agendas are and so on. So thank you, David. We have another question. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Joshua, boy, you're really chatty. Um, 
Joshua asked, would you consider putting the combat kit in the Microsoft stores so partners who do presentations in the store could use it? Catherine, I'll let you in. I'll let you give the official answer and then I'll offer an opinion. <laughs> Our official answer is we actually have a partnership with Microsoft so that there are some in some of the Microsoft event areas where they're holding the events. Um, if we, what we can do is if there is something, I would get in touch with your Lenovo rep to see um, who the local Microsoft person is because they do have those. Intel and Microsoft both have the kits. So if you are doing an event, um, reach out to your Lenovo channel rep to see who the local Microsoft rep is in your area um, that, that has the kit, and then they can join the event with you and represent Microsoft and have a combat kit for you as well. Excellent. What I would add to that is, um, is, is we go through the entire events motion here at SMB Nation, and that's what we do. Um, and and uh, God bless Jenny Hallmark. She does a great job. We have found the Microsoft store is so easy to work with. Catherine, we scheduled like three stores in an hour. Wow. And, 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 and then in some other capacities, which I won't go into detail on on a live line, but it's sometimes taken three days to schedule one event in a different realm. And I'll just leave it at that. But, but folks, you can use the training center inside the Microsoft store for free. They're very easy to work with. The only restriction that Jay bumped into, sorry, Jay, is no alcohol allowed because it's a family event, so no beer, Jay. <laughs> I'm bl bl blaming you, brother. Blaming you on that one. Yeah, I appreciate okay. that, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> we had pizza and soda pop. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I've got one other thing to add. Yeah, yeah, Jay, we're starting to run out of questions. Why don't you right. go ahead and uh, at, make an addition and we'll start to wrap up, sir. And, and I'll tell you, uh, my feeling is working with Lenovo and working with SMB Nation and XP Migrations is like this. Remember, the force will be with you, always. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't top that one. So, Catherine, <laughs> you're closing. You're <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Um, you're Catherine, welcome. your closing your closing comments, and then we'll bring this webinar to an end. Closing comments is just you know thank you again, Harry and um, Jay, for letting me join the call, and to all the business partners for attending. And we appreciate your business. We appreciate working with you. Um, and I'll provide that information over to Harry. And Harry, if you want, you can even provide. I'll give you my um, my contact information that you could share along to any of the business partners on this call. If they have any Lenovo questions, they can reach out to me directly as well. Okay, perfect. Well, be careful what you ask for, Catherine, because we had over 100 people sign up, which that's, that's, that's a good that's number, great. and I'll tell you what, that's a good number on Halloween. <laughs> it is. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, go out and do your trick-or-treating. Have a fantastic Halloween. Keep it safe out there. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.